Welcome to the Crafty Casa. Janelle here bringing you guys this week's project and we have an awesome transformation this week. This is an old computer armoire. I hope I'm saying it right. Or maybe like an old um, entertainment center. I'm really not quite sure what it is. Um, my brother gave it to us. Um, so thank you for that. It was free and it had so much potential and I really needed something to store some of my dog stuff in my um, my um, sunroom because there's where they stay and I saw a lot of potential here so I hope you guys enjoy uh, we transformed it into a very beautiful shabby chic looking um, we'll call it what like a hutch I don't even know what it is now um, but it, it's beautiful and uh, I can store some of my stuff in there and let's get going with this transformation so the first thing I did obviously we need to sand we, we need to sand the furniture piece. Um, this handheld sander obviously changed my life. I was doing it by hand before, but you know, it's worth the investment. Um, after we did that, this is what it looks like. Obviously we need to remove the oil and all the dirt so that the paint adheres better. Also, another thing that we did is that we replaced the back of it because it had all those holes, I guess, for the for the cords and stuff. Um, so we needed to replace that. Also, we removed a lot of the railing and some of this stuff that was just extra in there that we really didn't need. So he removed a lot of the inside parts of it. Um, here he's removing some of the railing. That's why I thought it was like a desktop or more, but I don't know, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so this is what it looks like. I mean, we removed a lot of the inside um, stuff, but um, he's now cutting the back of it um just a little thin piece of wood and staple it to the back this is what it looks like obviously the color difference doesn't matter because we are going to be painting it he removed the doors because he is going to remove the, the inside part of the door um, especially the top part of it because we're gonna add some chicken wire later so make a hole in the center and then he um, made like a little X with his little skill saw to be able to remove it without breaking the frame because we do need that frame later on and my husband is the best because he is always up for a challenge I come up with his crazy ideas and he helps me a lot obviously he does most of the work <laughs> but um, he's awesome so he here he's just wiggling the wood out out of the the frame and it wasn't too bad it wasn't too too hard and then he just removed the little excess uh, from inside the frame itself because we do need that little we need that little space for later on when he staples the chicken wire in there so we do we do need to clean it up he reattached the doors to make it easier for us to paint um, the armoire um, he gave it um, two really good coats of this paint that I bought from Lowe's. I'm going to try to link it down below. If you have any questions about the paint, please let me know. We obviously let it dry in between coats and um, it was the perfect color. I didn't want it too green. I didn't want it too, too blue and it was the perfect color. Um, this is what it looks like with the two coats of paint. And for the very, very first time, I tried to decoupage my little furniture piece. If you don't know what decoupage is, it's when you actually add um, some kind of paper or even fabric to a furniture piece or just, it could be glass, you can add it to anything um, using an adhesive. So I bought these paper towels from Dollar Tree thinking that the whole thing was going to have the pattern and it turned out only the very top part had it. So good thing I bought enough. But just know that Dollar Tree paper towels don't have the print all the way through. So I cut out the pattern um, 
and then I added some Mod Podge to the furniture piece just a little bit at a time just enough to um, to cover the little piece of paper towel or napkin because it does dry kind of quickly so I added it on there you can use a sponge or a brush I prefer the brush just because the sponges can rip pretty easily but if you're heavy-handed then definitely use a sponge so then I laid the paper towel right over it because you know sometimes they're, they're like doubled so only the very top the top part of the paper towel you'll need and then just push it in the little cracks and divots and add some decoupage I mean add some Mod Podge to the top part of it and you'll be good to go like I said if you're heavy-handed definitely use a sponge I, I'm pretty light-handed so I really didn't worry too much about ripping the paper but you do have to be very gentle because you could rip the paper although I'm gonna distress it at the end so that really wouldn't have mattered much but just know that again I added some more Mod Podge and laid another little piece of the paper towel Obviously, if you had whole paper towels, it would be way easier because you don't have to do itty bitty strips at a time. Try to overlap it a little bit with the previous piece and then give it another quick layer of Mod Podge. One thing that I learned in this uh, little process, my little experience here, because this was the very first time I did it, was that if you're planning on distressing your decoupage, please don't give it two coats of Mod Podge like I did. Um, so I did one coat as I went, right? And then at the very end, you're gonna see me give it another coat of Mod Podge. But I was going for a distressed look, so I was planning on distressing it. So I shouldn't have done that second coat. Please, trust me. It was the hardest thing to sand and trying to distress it at the end. So if you're gonna distress it, do just one coat like I did here. Just do one coat, let it dry completely, Distress it. If there's some bubbles, leave them bubbles. It's gonna make it easier for you to distress it because those bubbles are gonna come off pretty easily. If it wrinkles, leave those wrinkles. They actually add more of a distress look. That's gonna be better. Then at the end, when you distress it, you can do that second coat of Mod Podge if you're not gonna use a finish on it. Then you can do it. That's what I learned. Please do it. And I didn't clean up the edges because I was just gonna wait till it dried. That worked out pretty good. Um, Cause after it dried, I just sanded the edges and that was pretty easy. So you're more than welcome to clean it up as you go. And this is where I'm giving it that second coat of Mod Podge that I said before, if you're gonna distress it at the end, do not do, or at least be very light-handed. I went kind of heavy-handed with the Mod Podge, I'm not gonna lie. But um, it did work at the end. We did have a really, really hard time to distress it though because that Mod Podge sealed that paper so, so good. I love Deco Podge furniture and I always wanted one like this and I tried it and I was scared I was gonna ruin it but um, I don't think you can go too too wrong with this you could definitely do fabric and whatever you want to any pattern whatever you want to go with it's so much fun so here I'm just cleaning up the edges with a um, with some sanding paper and then I'm gonna sand some of the edges by hand um, with some sanding paper and then on the larger areas and on the front where the decoupage um, paper is, we're gonna be using a handheld um, sanding machine. Um, now, like I said, on the decoupage area, it was very difficult to sand, so we had to switch it off to the roughest sandpaper that we could find, and it was a 60 grit sanding paper. On the sides, you can use, I mean, 100, whatever you, you want to. Uh, but um, definitely if you went heavy-handed with a decoupage, you want some really rough sanding paper. So we used 60 on the front. This dressing is really up to you. You can do as much and as little as you like. Here he is sanding the front of the doors. Uh, as you can tell, it's kind of hard, but we did it. 
So here he is now cutting the chicken wire to the size that he needs so he can attach it to the top part of the doors because I'm just really excited to show you guys the end result. So here he's just opening the little um, opening where the um, frame is so that he can insert the chicken wire in there. He just simply inserted the chicken wire back in that little hole and then stapled it on. So as he's stapling this chicken wire onto the door, I'm going to explain to you guys that after we did this, we did um, give the entire armoire a nice coat of an oil-based finish. You can use anything you have in hand. I really don't recommend anything in particular because there's so many options. If you want to, you can. I used a satin paint, so it really didn't require a finish. But um, since I did use some napkins for the decoupage, I really wanted to just seal them in and you know make sure that it was gonna last enough so I did just add an oil finish to the entire thing which it was a little bit of a yellow base so it turned it a little bit more green but it's still beautiful so this is what it looks like in my sunroom like I said my pups they sleep in here this is like their their area it's a pretty big area and they're usually in here when I'm at work so I really needed some a place to store their food their little treats and you know, just the little clothes, anything else that I might need to store down there, I stored in mismatched baskets. But um, I really needed just something in there that looked pretty. I added my plants up there and I'm in love. I could definitely see this being like a pantry in a kitchen because it, it has that really nice um, rustic shabby chic look to this, to it. Um, even in the living room, I mean, in the dining room, you can make it into like a little hutch or whatever you like. All I know is that we're in love with it and it really brightened up our little sunroom area and um, we really, we, we really, really needed something in there. So I hope you guys enjoyed this transformation. As always, thank you so, so much for the support. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye.